Marvel section. What do you want to do? I don't know. Six months in, no intro. Welcome, everybody, to the Glazier Gamble Podcast. My name is Michael Glazier. This is Joe Rybolt, and this is our Marvel slash entertainment section of our podcast. We have two sections. The other one is sports. That's sports, like football. I was try- trying to do something else with my hands. Sports. Sports. Um, but yeah, this is our Marvel slash entertainment section. I'm glad you came to join us here. We have some good fun news today that i'm actually excited for we got tom holland's interview we might talk about on hot ones a little uh, absolutely. bit we both watched um it, so. leticia wright breaking news that happened today um thursday as of recording this we have let me just i don't want to mess it up we got modok kevin feige has some netflix breaking news that he decided to say instead of letting spoilers do it venom 3 shang chi 2 she hulk information uh moon knight Slash, not wait, not Moon Knight, Oscar Ooh. Isaac. And then Joe has a Spider Man No Way Home theory. We got some Mahersha Ali news, Luke Cage, Justice League versus Avengers. And then, uh, you know, we got some Jennifer Lawrence, J Law. And then we got in our miscellaneous section, we got some League of Legends TSM news, Harry Potter news, and uh, DC stuff. First thing we want to talk about is Modoc. Modoc is going to. Um, I was reading it. This Modoc has a similar role as uh, what was it? He will have a major role yeah. in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. So now we saw some. We've seen a bunch of theories in regards to Modoc, as um, apparently the rumor that uh, Jim Carrey was officially cast as yeah. Modoc, yep. um, which I I believe. Yeah. Um, yep. And then we got some more recent news, which is very obscure mm-hmm. um doesn't make much sense to me that a cory St- the actor cory stoll yep. will be back um he's uh uh D- Dar- darren cross like yep. darren cross in the mcu or yellow jacket um and that he would be coming back and playing modok that just doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense one you're casting the same actor in a different role two turning darren cross into modok yeah they said uh because of his uh, his him getting disfigured because of the um, when Scott shrunk him, yeah, that he would be shrunken with the big head. But that's not that. That sounds like a theory, not a yeah. Rumor. And then the other thing is that he didn't have like so if he has the bigger head and the smaller body, and he was just a normal per- like a normal person, he would die. Yep. Um, like like he wouldn't have enough blood to what it wouldn't work um and then like modok does experiments on himself or on on himself and eventually just so is darren Qua- cross in the quantum realm that's what i believe he gets shrunk, shrunk right. so small that he also goes into the quantum realm so i believe and this is any horror movie um suspense drama tv show if you see a character if you if you don't see a see character die. die if you don't see someone die they're probably not dead so in theory darren cross could have been doing these experiments on himself in the quantum realm he could. figured out how to survive yeah that could but i also don't know if like he just has the the like the same intellect as a modok right is he gonna be he talking stole all different? of his ideas from pim yeah is he gonna be talking different that like as mo like how modok talks right well jim carrey would actually do the yeah. voice and do it justice yeah. i don't i don't think that that's i think it i believe the jim carrey wants so much more do i think darren cross is could be back in quantum absolutely, Mini? absolutely. Yeah. like uh, i think yellow jacket should make an appearance right you didn't see him die so there's a good chance and he's there's the in the loki series um loki series you meet he who remains and in the loki series there was a giant blown up yellow, yellow jacket, jacket helmet. head so which i think is a definitely a hint that he's coming back yeah but not as Modoc. But not as Modoc. Yeah, probably as that a one. different version of Yellow Jack. Yeah. So I don't believe that. I mean, he lost an arm. He lost an arm before he got shrunk. So like, if you want to have him experiment on his arm, and he has a sick looking new arm, whether it's mechanical or whatever. Like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe come up with somebody new. That'd be pretty. That would be sweet. Yeah. Come up with a hero that's never existed before. Or, or, or villain. Yeah, villain. Yeah. Yeah. And you know. 
you know, they have, um, uh, this takes me into, like, the new uh, Young Avengers thing, which, uh, Haley Steinfeld did a, they did an interview recently, and they asked Haley Steinfeld, oh, do you want to, like, would you ever want to do, like, a Young Avengers project? And Kevin Feige was sitting up to her left, and she turns back and looks at him, just be like, can I answer that, or something like that? And Kevin Feige's like, better fucking watch what you say. <laughs> so, um, but no, you've got Cassie Lang, you got Cassie Lang. Yep. So, if, um... If Darren Cross goes into the quantum realm, gets stuck in a time vortex, develops powers, he's going to be the same age as he was now. Cassie Lang's grown up. Cassie Lang needs a villain to go up against. It could be a new and re reused. The guy who tried jacket. to kidnap her. Yeah, yeah, because of her dad. Yeah. That'd be so. so much, that'd be way better than him coming back as Modok. One hundred percent. Marvel, we know you're listening because yeah. you've quoted us multiple Tom times. Tom Holland. Tom Holland just quoted Timothy us today. So we know you're watching. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey's Modoc's perfect. Way better. Darren Cross still coming back as Yellow Jacket. Also perfect. Agreed. So. Next on our confirmation, since you just mentioned Feige. Uh, so, Kevin Feige recently was asked, like, how does he feel about all these leaks and stuff? Spoilers. And he said, I'm numb to it all. Yeah. Um, another solution that he's done besides saying he's numb to it is uh, just doing it all himself. Just <laughs> saying it before anybody gets a chance. Yeah. He confirmed in an interview that the... Net the Netflix version of the superheroes, like uh, Punisher, Daredevil, Charlie Cox, will be coming back into the MCU, and if or if they were to come back into the MCU, would be those actors. Yeah. So that means he specifically he specified Charlie Cox. Yeah. He, spe he specifically said Charlie Cox will be back as Daredevil. Yeah. Um, and when well, I don't know what uh, and Vincent how Vincent gave him a con congratulations. Yeah. He also said uh, the. Um, Vincent Nofrio also did a like even though like everyone's all the spotlights on Charlie Cox the actress I forget her name Deborah Wolf Deborah Wolf is or she plays Karen Page right um, which I believe is in all of them she's in all of the Netflix shows mm -hmm. so she's been a part of everything she's she's been a part of Punisher or she's, she's been in all the shows sure um, he's like also commend her on her work that you know she's just as good if you're gonna bring if you're going to bring uh, Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock back into the thing, you should bring Deborah Wolf's uh, Karen Page. Yeah. That's what Vincent Nofrio said. And I agree. I think anything, anybody that was successful and liked like that probably should bring them back. And you can obviously find a way to make it work. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very happy to hear the Charlie Cox thing because that should put to rest him getting badgered with questions yeah. every other day. Yeah. Now Andrew Garfield's just taking up the brunt of all that. Yeah. And that also opens the door for John Bernthal, yep. which is what everybody wants. Yep. Even Tom Holland yeah. mentioned that that's what he... would love to work with him. He's like, I don't know how that would happen. And then John, Kevin Feige, you saw like a red dot show up on his chest, and he's like, next question, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it would be sweet to have John Bernthal back, considering John Bernthal is just a classically he trained... He did so good actor. in... He, so, in Daredevil Season 2, um, it was like first half Punisher, second half Elektra. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it worked. In the half season he was in, in Daredevil, he spun two like two seasons worth for his own show. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how good he was. So And he was believable. He's believable as, you know, Shane in The Walking Dead. He does a great job. He does a terrific job in Night at the Museum as yeah. Al Capone. Yeah. He just, he has such range that I want John Pernod back. And the fact and, that, and, and... And he enjoys the character. Yeah, and uh, he has that brutalness about him that, like, I mean, if you've ever seen The Punisher, it's it's brutal. Like, it's punishing. Yeah, it's it's brutal. Yeah. So, yeah. Perfect. Like you. Yeah, so John Bernthal, Christian Ritter, I believe, would probably be the next person they get in. Uh, Jessica Jones. Uh, Mike Coulter as Luke Cage would be good. And then, you know, you can bring in Finn Jones as uh, as Danny Rand just to kill him, him off and give the Iron Fist to the new Iron Fist yeah. coming in February. Yeah. So have the multiverse version of Iron Fist come in and replace yeah. him. Because yeah. that Iron Fist was doggy doodah. Yeah. Yeah. Not great. Uh, he was good as Danny Rand. He played a great Danny Rand. Yeah. He played a horrible Iron Fist. Yeah. So. And he refused to learn martial arts. Yeah. And that's for a character that's specifically is meant to do martial arts probably not a good sign yeah. refusing to show up to training never a good sign as any actor yeah. um that'd be like 
having this dude, oh, you're playing somebody from the UK, so we're gonna give you a vocal coach. And I'm not going to vocal training. Okay. No, but you have to do a British accent. Ben Affleck. I think Ben Affleck did that for a, a movie where he didn't do an accent, and then on the day of filming is when he decided to start practicing his accent. Nice. That's our Batman. That's, that's, no, Batson's our Batman. <laughs> I would say Christian Bale, but he's gore. Yeah, now he's gore. Uh, but our next topic that we wanted to cover, Venom 3 is officially in production. Um, well, that's not surprising. Sony has wanted to expand the Spider-Verse. They said that their plan moving forward is focus on Sony Spider-Verse. They created their own name for it, which was what? The, the SMUC. Right. Like the Sony... The uh, SUMC. The, the Sony the the Universe of Marvel Characters. The Sunk. The Sunk. Yeah. And the Sony uh, Universe of Marvel characters. Yeah. So they created it for all focused around Spider Man, focusing with Venom and all that. So we knew this was coming. So I, I'm not surprised to hear it started and that it's ready to go and that they're beginning production. Um, Tom Hall, Tom Hardy was wearing the same hat as Kevin yeah. Feige in an interview. Yeah, he was at the. Or apparently, he was like on set and he had a. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home The same hat. exact hat that Kevin Feige wore in his most recent interview. Yeah. Um, it's 100%. There, Tom Hardy's going to make his way into the MCU. If you're... He's in the MCU now. He already, already is, is, yeah. It's just when he's going to show up. We don't so, know. So, because with these characters being focused, being part of not only the Sony, the Sunk, and the Maku... <laughs> you're going to have to... Speak in a different language. The Sunk and the Maku... You have to keep Venom around, so I'm I'm not surprised. Obviously, the fact that it's in production is the big news, not the fact yeah, that it's, it's been in the planning stages. Right, yeah. is the fact it's pre-production. Yeah, they're talking about what story they probably want to do. With right, this. which please, ex I've said it after we said it after Venom Two in our spoiler free review. Um, expand the symbiotes, the symbiote. Yeah. Expand I mean, the symbiote lore. Please. I th I think they're. With that side of their universe, they, they, it leads to one person, and that's Null. Um, and so they got to get to that point because it's going to be if, it, if it's Spider-Man and Venom, if it's the if it's the Sump going up against all the symbiote army to try to stop Null, then that's what they got to do. So <laughs> yeah, and with Gore, with Dane Whitman, yeah, you have. You have to, like, those are heavily involved in symbiotes. You have Nowhere already mentioned. Like, you have all the openings to bring up symbiotes. There's no reason not to. People already, like, the fans of Venom will watch Venom no matter what. Even the people that didn't like Car Let There Be Carnage, they all thought Carnage was sick and yeah. cool. So, you can bring in anti-venom you can you can they have diff venoms of or, or symbiotes of all different colors in the yep. comics bring them all in i want to see the symbiote planet like i just clintar clintar yeah that's a really risky name yeah saying that too fast mm -hmm. Oof. the clintaris is a place we really want to go clintar is yeah the clintar is a place you want to go yeah like that is risky like it um anyway the next thing speaking of things in production while we're on the topic of production pre-production shang chi 2 and a spin-off an unnamed spin-off of shang chi that is supposedly a comedy that is a, supposed that to be a comedy is yeah is also in pre-production the number one request for the spin-off was wong no oh well the spin-off yeah yeah wong, wong. I can see something about Katie, but you can't... Yeah, um, that's her name, right? Katie? Yeah. I don't I think, think it would really... be Madame Hydra or Viper. I think it would be his sister. Oh, Jai Ling? The, I think it would be a Jai Ling. If it's not Wong, I think it's Jai Ling because of the end credit scene where she's yeah. now like the new Ten Rings yeah. and she has the Hydra poster. Yeah, yeah the Red Skull like worship thing. Yeah, so I, I think it would be a Jai Ling spinoff if it's yeah. not Wong. Yeah. Or Jai Ling will be the villain in Chang Chi Chu. Chang Chi Chu. Chang Chi Chu. Yeah. Chang Chi Chu. So, um, I think more news. Uh, the uh, number one request on Reddit. Okay. Um, there's like two. Is it's this for the spinoff? No, this is for the show. Okay. A movie. Everyone was like, everyone. The the post was straight up. Who do you guys want as a villain for Shang Chi Two? And the number one request was that Iron Fist was in it. 
the, was the in it, not the villain. Not the villain. Yeah. That Iron Fist was in it. Yeah. And then the number one villain request was Fin Fang Foom. I understand why for both. Yeah. Um, I think if you do Fin Fang Foom, it should be a trilogy where Fin Fang Foom wins in the second movie and then loses in the third. Yeah. Because um, it's just, it's too big of a villain to Yeah, do and you know, you, you, if you're going to keep this whole dragon aspect, you can still bring in the dragon, like the dra you can bring in Shao Lao, mm -hmm. like, and Kun Lun. Like, you bring in the Danny Rand stuff, the Iron Fist stuff, you can bring that in. Yep. And you can still have a dragon in that. And then sure. to realize the whole big bad, this whole thing is the dragon that, you know, the Marvel Universe has. Fin Fang Foom would be the third one. Her yeah. Brother, so. I like that. Uh, yeah. I like that. And also, I also want the, I also want Shang-Chi, though, to have, like, a little scrap with Iron Fist. Like, oh, yeah. Know, yeah. Like, they, when they don't know each other, yeah. they fight. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then Iron Fist just clocks him. Just clocks him. Because, yeah, like, like Shang-Chi does his little, like, power, Drink like, where he does this, like, he powers up, and then Iron Fist, like, powers up his. Yeah. Yeah. I was probably off camera for that. It's, like, the, one of the one of the best scenes in the, um, like, the Iron Fist show, or the Luke Cage show, or whatever, whenever they did it, was, um, obviously Luke Cage is unbreakable skin, so Danny Rand is sitting there, like, slapping him and doing, like, kung fu moves on him, and nothing's... Luke Cage is just standing there getting hit by him. Right. And then Luke Cage is like, stop it, and like punches him down or whatever. And then he's like this and just turns and goes <laughs> like just just clocks him and like shoots Luke Cage against the wall. And so like for this guy to be unbreakable and then just gets launched. Launched. To see Chong Chi think that he like beat him up with his rings and right. all of a sudden just just get yeah, just takes yeah. takes one in the face, goes flying. Yeah. 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 Or maybe he punches the rings back. Yeah. He I mean, yeah, he's strong enough that he can deflect. Yeah. I think it'd be like sweet to have him like knock the rings back into him. Yeah. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Or like, what's your deal or whatever? And then like Shang-Chi like, rips notes. his shirt. <laughs> Shang-Chi like rips his shirt and sees the dragon tattoo on him. He's yeah. like, I have, I have a dragon in me. What do you and then he's like Oh <laughs> I've been in a dragon. <laughs> Shang-Chi could say that. Yeah. Yeah. We were in the demon, yeah. I guess. Sticking with Shang-Chi, too. Yeah. The director, da Dustin Daniel Creighton. Dustin Daniel, Daniel Creighton. Creighton. Gets a multi-year deal to yeah, do from, from Marvel. Shang-Chi, too. Yeah. And there was something with the... They also signed on a couple other casts, like, back behind the... Like, production. Yeah, sure. Soundtrack. Yeah, so he's coming back to do the second one, and he's also going to be in charge of the spinoff, too. So... Good choices. Keeping keep, their Marvel keeping, keeping their continuity, talent. Continuity, yeah. like what Kevin Feige has his hand and everything. He started out by make, like ta doing X Men, like making sure the X Men were all connected. Right. That's sort of Spider thing. the Tobey Maguire Spider Man. He was a producer. Sticking, keeping the same directors like that is super smart. That's why I think they should, because the director for Loki is not going to be in the second seat. Not going to be yeah. the Loki director for second season. So that's why it makes me a little yeah. nervous. I think they should try to stick with it when yeah. they when they can. Excuse me. Uh, then the next one that I want to talk about is another, so that spinoff will most likely be on Disney Plus. Right. The next one I want to talk about is a Disney Plus thing, which is She-Hulk. It is confirmed that she will be 100% CGI, and I get it. Something like that with makeup and that sort of thing looks silly. And Tatiana Maslany is small. Yeah. She's a small, petite woman. So yeah, I mean... Mark Ruffalo, same thing, you know, or Tim Roth's Abomination, like, it's yeah. the same thing. Um, yeah, I guess I have no real, no real problem with it. You're going to see, she's going to have very similar facial features, mm -hmm. which is it's similar to Mark, Mark Ruffalo's. Well, yeah, Mark Ruffalo's so, Hulk looks like Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. So, so, it's fine. I, I Obviously, I get where people were upset because the other, the previous She-Hulk was Tatiana two Masa different actors. like four, six. I don't well, know. they had a separate actor come in to be She-Hulk. Oh. In the old ones, it was it just like it was Lou Ferrigno was Hulk, but there was a different actor who played Bruce Banner. Oh. Yeah. So that's what they used to do, but that also looks like a cartoon. Yeah. So you have to do CGI. That's what CGI is there for, is yeah. to bend reality to make it more. Well, you we're can not talking about you, Wanda here. You can expand more of what you can do. I was thinking yeah. like augmented reality, like Pokemon oh. Go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, CGI is meant to expand <laughs> Ah, yeah, great. <laughs> what excellent. It was perfect. No, great. Nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so also with She-Hulk is she'll 
talk directly to Kevin Feige yeah. so, um, and the lot camera. Of, yeah, not a lot of people know that uh, Jennifer Walters slash She-Hulk was breaking the fourth wall before Deadpool was breaking yeah. the fourth wall. We talked about that ten episodes ago. Yeah, long ago. So... I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm all for it. It's I mean, better. If you so fourth wall breaks are something that's very popular to the point where certain T V shows now are doing it. Oh yeah. To like mockumentary style has always been like basically like a fourth the, the wall. Office. Like the office has kind of they're like they'll stare at you. Like, right. Where it's kind of where it's supposed to be filmed like a documentary, so it's not like they're staring at you, they're staring at the person filming it. Right. But there's a new show that's absolutely garbage that came out last year called Call Me Cat, which is like a sitcom. And she sits there and talks to the camera about the show, and it's absolutely terrible. Like, But people want fourth wall breaks to the point where shows and sitcoms like ABC, those sorts, and NBC are trying to put it into sitcoms because they tell, say, right. see that people want it. Yeah. Um, but I think Marvel's going to do it the right way. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, if you think about it, they, they, Agatha Harkness did. Yeah. So, like, when Wanda's doing the, the modern, <laughs> the, well, I don't think it, it was, it wasn't that. I know, scene, but that's, but like, yeah. <laughs> but the, the scene where it's like the modern family episode where Wanda's like talking to her and it's, and she it's turns Agatha around. And she turns around and like looks at us. Yeah. Like she was doing it. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, they'll, no, do it. they'll do it right. They'll do it right. And she's already, she's, if they, they wouldn't be sticking, everybody's talking about how they, Marvel fans, especially the loud ones on Twitter, say they want you to stick to the character as much as possible. Yeah. But sticking to the character is doing full, fourth wall breaks. Yeah. So it was necessary. Yeah. I hope she has some, like, not, like, crude humor, too. Like, she's funny. Yeah. I think it'll be good. I hope it. Yeah. I think. I, I mean, Tatiana, Tatiana Maslany just seems like a little fireball herself. So I would like... love if they get a little bit crude when Hulk comes in, like if she asks him, like, "Do certain things for you change yeah. when you become Hulk?" Like, some bigger and he's like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> right." Like, yeah. I, uh, well, yeah. like, and I hope she says something about like, oh, "For me, some, some stuff changes," and then like Hulk's like, "Yeah, it was weird at first. Like, I really hope they have yeah. like a little interaction yeah. where they're hinting at what they're talking yeah. about, but something like that where it's not crude, so it's still his PG thirteen, yeah. but you get it. Yeah, I, I would love that, and especially if it's just like. Tatiana Maslany. I think it would be perfect. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is something I'm going to let you take the lead because it was you were the yeah. one that found the information. Mahershala Ali has seen. Yeah, so we haven't, all well, outside everything we know about Blade is just the uh, uh, the little voice cameo in, yeah. e in Eternals uh, post credit scene too. Uh, but Mahershala Ali did an interview um, the other day and they asked him about like his upcoming, upcoming projects or whatever, mainly Blade. That's yeah. about Blade, and he's like, "Yeah, we haven't. I mean, we're kind of like keeping everything close to the close to the vest when we talk about it." And uh, they're like, "Did you see that Wesley Snipes gave you like a like like he'll do great is what uh, he'll do great with the like praying hands?" Yeah. Um, and Maher Shali saw it, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm very humbled that like um, that like you know this legend, this Marvel legend that kind of." Started the whole superhero. Like, he he also the... paved the way for black superheroes. Yeah. Because outside of Spawn, yeah. Blade was like the only. He said he Blade was the only black superhero he saw. Right. Otherwise, every time he saw a superhero, they were always white. Right. So, um, yeah. So he was very humbled by that. The fact that Wesley Snipes gave him like, almost like the passing of the torch. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, and then uh, they asked him about. He's like, "Well, you've been in a Marvel role before. You played the character Cottonmouth." on the Luke Cage series, and he's like, he just got out of a project, like, out of a previous project, and they asked him to come do the Blade thing, or the Luke Cage thing, sorry, and he's like... You should be sorry. <laughs> yeah, and basically the, the director was like, do you want to come play this character Cottonmouth on Luke Cage? He dies. And he's like, I, I'll do that. And he took the role knowing he, he was going to die because he didn't want to get stuck. Sure. So then they asked him about Blade and it being like, well, do, are you, do you feel like you're going to get stuck with Blade? And then he said um, that Marvel is always changing and adapting and he feels like um, it's going to be a constant challenge for him as Blade. And said that he was super super, super nervous and anxious um, even for his voice cameo because like that was like his first portrayal of... Sure. Um, yeah, of Blade. Yeah, himself, I saw so. that he was nervous to even do the voice. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. He had one line. Yeah. You sure you're ready for that, Mr. Whitman? Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, just really, just yeah. one thing, but that just shows how seriously he's yeah. taking it, which is what you should expect, or should want from all your actors, and not just Marvel, but... 
to know that he's taking his... I'm not surprised. Based yeah. on how he's been and everything else he does, I'm not surprised that he's taking it that seriously and that careful about what he says. Most of the actors, especially like the ones cast in the past five years, seem to take all their roles that way. Yeah. So, that's why Marvel's so successful and they're picking the right people. It's like... To talk to carry it over to sports, uh, it's like the New England Patriots, where it's all they, they don't necessarily take the most talented person, they make sure it's the most talented mental so that they can understand what the team wants. Same with the cat, the actors, like they don't necessarily take the person that looks exactly like the Marvel character because they understand that if they have the right attitude and right work ethic, the fans will attribute that character to what they look sure. like in the future. Yeah. And I think that's smart. I'm glad. It's right off the bat, Nick Fury. Prime example. Ex like, perfect. Yep. Yeah. Mark Ruffalo, I mean, the, the Hulk in the comics looked nothing like what Mark, exactly. Mark, Mark Ruffalo yeah. looks like. He looked more like uh, Edward Norton's... Except like, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Edward Norton, more on that later. Yeah. Uh, next thing that we can talk about, though, uh, let's get into some big breaking news of today. Uh, we talked about it in a previous episode. Letitia Wright was injured, and then they po they just delayed production, um, and then they had to delay production again. Um, she was in London, and now in order to travel in and out of London due to the restrictions, she would have to get vaccinated, so they can't continue filming unless she gets vaccinated. Uh, while apparently she is not interested in continuing, continuing in the MCU because they are requiring vaccinations. Um, so unless they make it a special deal for her, like she doesn't have to, we they will have to completely rewrite Black Panther 2 because it's been written to the fact where Shuri's supposed to be the primary protagonist. I saw a, Or they'll have to recast her. I saw a another rumor that said a fan favorite villain um, is rumored to come back and be a mentor to a young hero. So a fan favorite villain would have came back to mentor Shuri then? That's what, I mean, that's that's all the thing said. Was that a fan favorite villain and then there was a bunch of pictures of villains would come back to lead a young hero and the first thing that came to my head was Killmonger so right. well and so my first tweet when I saw the breaking news was it sounds like they're paid because people were saying if you recast Shuri you should recast T'Challa and I don't feel like that'd be necessary if they did recast Shuri but I get the reasoning behind it um I think you could recast Shuri without recasting T'Challa but I think this is what I tweeted it paves the way it opens the door for you to just do a Killmonger, Killmonger redemption. Killmonger part. comes back and he's the new head. Yeah. Michael B. Jordan says he's for yeah. it. Yeah. Michael B. Jordan killed it. Killmonger is probably the best Marvel villain in my eyes. Yeah. I like him better than Thanos, yes. And yeah, I, I think Marvel he would they would be super smart. They the issue, you have to rewrite the movie. Yeah. You have to hire the writers to rewrite again. Uh, you still have to pay him for the initial story. It's uh it's interesting how much money it would cost for them to redo Black Panther for a free shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I just, like I, I'm, I'm not trying to like make it political or anything, but the idea, like just thinking about that, is it's like it's a free shot, but it's not free for everyone. Right. It's not free for Marvel because if she doesn't get, if Letitia Wright drops out because she can't, won't get the shot. Right. That is the most expensive not getting a shot yeah. I can she, think yeah, of. Yeah, everyone was, a lot of things on Twitter were like, she doesn't, she, she sees the, like, the money, like, the money, like, the money train that Marvel's going down. And she'll still She's get like, paid for what they've shot so far. Yeah, but she sees the, the Marvel money train, like, that is with Black Panther and the MCU, and is like, no thanks. Yeah, so. yeah, which... If it's whatever reason, if it's political, scientific, religious, whatever she want, whatever reason, I'm going to support whatever. If people want to get it or don't get it, it's their choice. It's interesting to me what people are willing to right. give up. But yeah, I mean, I, it, she has strong moral or she has strong beliefs to side with how what she believes in over millions multiple movie deals i mean she won't be in what if anymore that means she won't yeah. be the voice of shuri like she's giving up more than just black panther yeah. um but you know what that's yeah, that's her choice my vote is killmonger uh, that's yeah. my vote yeah. otherwise um 
White Wolf. White Wolf. Yeah, I saw some Bucky stuff too. With how, what Black Panther did for the African American community, I don't think White Wolf would be smart. Right. But yeah, me neither. <laughs> I don't think that would be the right move, but I think it would be a cool storyline to follow. I think the right move is to kill Mark kill Redemption, Redemption, Mark. Redemption yeah. because people love Michael B. Jordan and they love the character. Come yeah. on, and it's like, hey, you want to be? He's got his Black Panther suit too. My second choice would probably be recasting Shuri, and my third choice would be Mbaku. Mbaku. That, that, that's there you and go. My fourth choice would be Namor. As the lead? After he destroys Wakanda. Sure. After he just obliterates Wakanda. Yeah. I'm fine with all of that, honestly. I, it's Whatever choice they make, I'm sure it'll be the right one. Um, but th that's what I would prefer the most. But Killmonger, for sure. I might even prefer M'Baku over recasting, to be honest. I probably would. I mean, just the... It's going to be hard to see somebody else's T'Challa. Here's the, here's the thing. You have... You have... The implications of Namor being in Black Panther 2. It's gonna be, there's no Doctor Doom in it, whatever, the, that first report that said Doctor Doom's gonna be the villain of Black Panther 2. That's not gonna happen. That's not happening. It's gonna be Namor. It's gonna be, they set it up in Endgame with Okoye being like, there's a, there's a, um, something in the ocean. Yeah, there was an earthquake in the ocean, which also could have been Eternals, I suppose. It could have been, a, interesting. that um, could be Eternals. Yeah, it could have been referencing Eternals, but they also didn't notice the titan coming out of the water or the right uh, but i think that's atlantis i think it's whatever. atlantis for sure and then who would be the best to lead in the army of wakanda versus the army of atlantis and if you say mbaku that's probably wrong because he's too slow to fight someone like namor as opposed to killmonger, killmonger who'd be perfect and in the military had experience in water-based combat as well as land-based combat yeah, Killmonger would be... Our choice. Yeah, our choice. Probably a lot of fan choices. Yeah. Interesting to see where they'll go from here. Maybe this rumor or this story will come out is not true. However, little background, the people who broke the story about Letitia Wright also broke the news about Shang-Chi 2 being in production three months before it was announced. So take that however you want to. All right, so let's do spider stuff. And then after spider stuff, we'll do Hawkeye and then get normal miscellaneous. Missile little line. Uh, first spider news is with Into the Spider Verse. Oscar Isaac will be back for Into the Spider Verse 2. Across the Spider Verse. Across the Spider Verse. Yeah. Part 1. Yeah. As Spider Man 2099. However, the catch is he will be paid the same as Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy. Which. If you watch the trailer, Spider-Man 2099 seems like it's going to be the primary villain. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Which means probably going to span two movies. Probably going to be in part one and part two. Yeah. Maybe you see him transition to, uh, to the hero side for the second one. Maybe. So, um, yeah, maybe. They covered so many of the villains in the first one. Yeah. So, yeah. it'd have to be... Which, they didn't cover Venom. Right. In the first Venom. one. The... Um, Rhino, Lizard. I mean, there's other, there's other Craven. Yeah. So we'll see who they decide to do. Otherwise, uh, yeah, 299 looks like he's moving to the main villain. Yeah, just out of nowhere, just Miles is just flying through. Then all of a sudden, gigantic <laughs> Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So very cool. Excited for that. Next Spider-Man news that I heard of today was that uh, Sony is targeting Jennifer Lawrence. To play Madam Web. Madam Web, yeah. Uh, That's who they want. They've already reached out to her, apparently. And uh, the thing, the issue is it doesn't seem as though there has been very much response from Jennifer Lawrence's like side. Mutual which I'm pretty sure she's pregnant. She's pregnant. So yeah. I don't blame her for not wanting to right. talk about work right now. But hey, as soon as your kid is born, do you want to come? Do you want to come do an action movie? Yeah. Do you want, like, do you want to come shoot action scenes after you push out a 10-pound baby? Yeah. <laughs> come on, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, obviously you don't know what size, but yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. That's an assumption. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I just, I, it's cool. I think her going back into the superhero universe, like just the idea yeah. of her being a superhero, doesn't seem like she would want to. I think we, when we talked about J-Law earlier, it was in regards to like, I thought the perfect role for her would would be Enchantress, but then they kind of molded Enchantress into Sylvie. Yeah. Yep. Um. So, 
scratch that. Um, reverse it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't I don't know what I would uh, want her as. It would be interesting to see her as Madame Web, especially because if that's what they're targeting, because that means yeah. they have an idea in mind, yeah. and that's a, that's the type of person, that's the personality they want. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's more DC characters I can see her as than yeah. MCU. Yeah. Right. It'll be interesting if she does become Madame Web. I'm I'm gonna want to sure. see that because oh, yeah. it's, it's Jennifer Lawrence. She's one of the biggest names, yeah. Especially just past ten years. So yeah, it'll it'll be cool. I like the I like the idea, but I understand why Jennifer Lawrence doesn't want yeah. to, and I also understand if she decides she doesn't want to do it. Yeah, just sure. <laughs> Superhero movies probably leave the idea of them probably leave just a bad taste in her mouth with the whole mystique thing. Right. She didn't. She wanted. She asked to be killed. Yeah, absolutely. She asked for her character to be killed, and they said you have to do one more movie. Yeah. And you could tell in the movie she didn't want to be there. Yeah. They they killed her real quick. Yeah. So I don't know if she'd want to do it again. It'll be maybe with all this time It'll off. Be a lot less. Like makeup and everything, right? Which for, that was a big part of why she yeah, didn't like it was sitting like, in the makeup chair for four hours. Yeah, which the first person, the first woman who played Mystique in the two thousands X Men, said that that was a pain, but she loved the final product so much that it was worth it. Right. So just two different mentality yeah. things there, but she was. All, I mean, yeah. Compared the first three X Men movies, compared to the other X Men movies, like. I mean, I don't know. The original Mystique says she showed up like between four and eight hours before when so everybody else yeah. showed up. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the last Spider Man news is Joe has a theory for so, No Way Home. So, I, 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 I've been juggling this thought around in my head. I can see it in regards to, well, there's not, there's a lot of uh, empty room up there. Okay. So, got like, it. If you, you can probably hear it. The thoughts bouncing around. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, just the, the title. The title, No Way Home. Yep. Um, and I don't know how this would work. I don't know if it would work. But, um... I was just looking at the camera. Oh. Um, the, the No Way Home part is, is kind of intriguing me. Because I don't know... I want to say that the, the shocker... Would be no pun intended. Um, the the shock aspect would be if if like this is the arguably considered like the most ambitious movie since like Infinity War or Endgame. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so Tom Holland says it's the best Spider Man movie ever made. Yeah. So wh what would happen if at the end of the movie our Spider Man, our Peter Parker gets trapped in a different universe. Therefore, there is Spider-Man, no, no way home. Therefore, Spider-Man, no way home. Not yeah. Spider-Man has no way home. Therefore, Spider-Man, no way home. Yeah. And so now, it's, it's, a whether, see, I don't see, it's like, would they do that? But then it's like, what if Spider-Man 4, or The Amazing Spider-Man 3, is them, trying to get Tom Holland Spider-Man back, back into our universe where he then has to use the help of Supreme Strange to get him over <laughs> um, I don't know it's so just something I was, I was I can juggling that, around a lot of times titles do give away the ending um, it could also be that the villains have no way home yeah or our other spider like our other the other Spider-Man right so if they're in it. Even though Andrew Garfield just said two days ago in an interview, I am not in it. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry if that upsets you. I'm done getting asked this question. <laughs> okay. And everybody's like, see you in two days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're totally not in it. <laughs> and I'm not in a base. Why is nobody asking Tobey Maguire? Why is it all Andrew Garfield? <laughs> like, Tobey Maguire is just sitting there. Just, I can't move. There's cars there. <laughs> sitting at home, watching Andrew Garfield get just beat down. And, uh, and he's like, can, we, can somebody else take the heat? <laughs> that guy. Oh, man. But yeah. Uh, I think I could see, t especially because, you know, Tom... Or not Tom, but Peter Parker can never find happiness with Mary Jane. Just doesn't. Like, right. That's like the whole thing. Right. Is like they can never find peace. 
um, them finally coming to peace or whatever, and then him being stuck at yeah. No Way Home. Yeah. I could see that. I also I could also see Doctor Strange having No Way Home because he's being put into the multiverse of madness. Right. Speaking of multiverse of madness. Just you can say anything, you two rumor and then just anything. And you see the timeline spread. Yeah. Just rumor and then anything, and then that's a thing. Yeah. Like I heard uh, I saw something the other day. Um, Edward Norton might come back as Hulk. As a multiverse Hulk? Yeah. That'd be weird. I wouldn't like that. Well, here's the thing. You know, in, in the second Incredible Hulk, where he fights Abomination? Yeah. And, like, he does the thunderclap, and he's just, like, pissed. Yeah. Like, just, like, that the, That was the fiercest version of Hulk we've ever had. Sure. Um, like, I wonder, there, there was this thing, I was like, I wonder how Thanos would look if this guy pulled up, and then it's Edward Norton's Hulk coming out, and I was like, well, it would have been a better fight than Bruce Banner's Hulk. Yeah, because sure. our Bruce Banner's Hulk doesn't smash, doesn't, we can't. Right. <laughs> he doesn't clap. He doesn't do the thunder jump or whatever. Yeah. He did none of it. Yeah. Doesn't even do like the Hulk scream that was in yeah. the one version of Hulk. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, I've seen any, I've seen everything. Uh, but yeah, I would say that you could see Doctor Strange being stuck, not Peter. Right. It because that would be. It seems like it's setting up Multiverse of Madness oh, more mean, than it's setting yeah. up the next Spider Man. Yeah, which is, it's supposed it's supposed to be like a prequel. So, so maybe, maybe yeah, I would maybe assume that it would stuck. be Doctor Strange who's stuck, or maybe Doctor Strange and Peter are yeah. stuck. Either he sacrifices himself, but then where does Wanda come? I don't know. There's so many, so many things. I like the theory. I like, I like it because the title often gives stuff away. Wait, so that makes so much sense. Um, if I had to guess, it would be Doctor Strange, not Peter. Sure. But the fact that Gwen and Mary Jane, whoever the woman is involved with Peter Parker, whatever universe. They never find peace. Yeah. It would make so much sense. Yeah. We'll keep an eye out for that, especially because we'll be going. Uh, the it's last Saturday at 7.30. 7.30 at night? Yeah. And it's going to be packed. Yeah. Well, we got the same seats as last time. Nice. Same seats this'll we be, had. This will be the first Marvel movie that we've seen, I think, that we've like bought tickets for, like we, Eternals and Venom and those movies. This will be the first one that is like full, full. Yeah. But we got the same spots as Eternals, except we have one extra chair to the right. So of the three slots we had, we got the four. Nice. Nice going. Um, the last thing we have to talk about Marvel-wise before we do our miscellaneous and then send you on your way is uh, Hawkeye. Episode 4 just happened. And uh, like, what's it called? Partners, am I right? Or something like that. Partners, am I right? Yeah. Because that's what... Kate says. Kate says to Hawkeye. Uh, it was probably the one of the slower episodes yes, until the last until the last like two three minutes of the episode. It was probably the slowest episode, which is fine. They have to do a build up considering the character that was revealed. Yeah. Um, it starts out you know like Hawkeye trying to get all this information. It, it starts off where we left off that cliffhanger where Jack's holding the sword to Hawkeye and then her uh, mom and comes then, in yeah, and then all of a sudden Jack's like. Jack, Jack's like about to cut his throat and then he's all of a sudden he's like oh there's an Avenger in my kitchen well the mom yeah. comes by and goes why is there an Avenger in my yeah, kitchen and her, and he, her mentality like changes too yeah. or her. and so uh, that happens and they have like a sit down discussion where they talk with Kate and uh, Kate, Hawkeye, Jack and her mom all stand there together and they sit there and talk and then uh, Kate's mom walks Hawkeye yeah, to the like, elevator. Can I walk you out? Right, and at that, that, that moment, I was like, yep, we've been saying she's the villain. Yeah. This is and if you... It's a really small detail. Um, it shows Hawkeye... Like, Hawkeye gets the sword. He grabs her own he grabs sword. grabs the sword, and, like, you don't see him grab the sword. But if you pay attention to the thing, like... Like, Kate's, like, staring at Jack, like, getting his attention. And then, like, you see her, like, look over... And then, like, as she looks over the mirror behind her, like, there's the reflection of Hawkeye, like, walking or walking past. That's when he took the sword. And that's when he took the sword. And Jack's like, why are you looking at me like that? Right. Yeah. And so, and then, and then Kate's like, Kate, like, looks back at him. Then she gets up. Yeah. But when Hawkeye, when she, when, his, when her mom walks Hawkeye to the elevator, she basically says, people get lost. And then she brings up Nat, Natalie. Yeah. And I was like, how do you know that? Because she's the security. Yeah. So she knows security threats. Yeah. Like Natalie. Natasha. Everyone. Yeah, everyone. Why, we always say Natalie. We always want to say Natalie, but it says Nat. But Natalia. Natalia. 
Uh, but yeah, so she mentions that, and then after she leaves, she makes you. He makes a. She makes a phone call. Before that, she asks Hawkeye to drop the case for Kate. Mm. So you're gonna you're gonna give up this case? I can't do that. But I can nobody your in a security it. work a line of work would ask you to give up a case where life and death is involved right. and like might involve an Avengers level threat or national security. Nobody in security would want you to give that up unless they were on the bad side. Yeah. Um, we find out that the CEO of the tracksuits is Jack Duquesne. Of TSM. Uh, yeah, of TSM and. Um, I think it's because her mom is operating under Jack's name. Okay. I think. Tracksuit mafia. Yeah. I think. I think that her mom is using Jack's name, so that okay. it can't be traced back to her. But she has access because right. he's there, and she's oh. Yeah. So she's, she's distracting. She's him. making the money moves for the big guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And the big guys. Kingpin, yeah. and uh, I think she's doing it under the name of Jack, so that she can't be trained. And she's Queen. the true, she's the true villain. Yeah. Like we keep saying, yeah. I think it's all coming together that way. Yeah. So that's I think yeah. she asked yeah. him to stop for that, not for Kate, because she doesn't honestly probably doesn't care as much about Kate as she cares about money. Right. And uh, yeah, and then or man, money, her power, her influence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then they go and Kate and Hawkeye, Kate leaves them yeah, during the holidays. Yeah, she makes a phone call. We don't know who. Everyone wants you to assume it's to, spoiler at the end, but I think it's to, like, but it could have been to, like, Val. Or her mom? Vet, yeah. Yeah. Like, Val. And, be like, hey. and says we have a situation. Yeah. 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 I would say that she either called Kingpin or Val. Yeah. Vanessa. Oh. Valerie. Dave. Val yeah. yeah. Valerie. Dave Contessa. Contessa. Dave yeah. Valerie Contessa. Dave Contessa. Something like that. Um, so I think it's either Val or Kingpin that she right. called, uh, or Echo. Yeah, but I think I think Echo is also one of the kind of under. All right, so I would say she probably uncle. called Kingpin if I had to guess, and then uh, then they go and Kate. The, her mom says that it's nice to be around family for the holidays. Kate thinks about Hawkeye, so then she goes over to the apartment, and they have like this whole Christmas scene. And yeah. Hawkeye teaches her how to flick a coin, how to kill somebody with a coin, how to kill somebody with a coin, <laughs> um, which I'm sure is going to come back at some point. Yeah. And then they uh, go and they try to find his Rolex, which was where we found out that's what from the Avengers. Well, first she had to, uh, first she had to go get the arrows. Right, she had, they had to go get special arrows, so or they go the to the LARPers, the, arrows, yeah. the, the trick arrows, which are at the police compound, so she goes and gets becomes friends with the LARPers, they make a deal that the LARPers can make their costumes, and then she takes the, they have a little LGBT call out there, yeah. that they, they do it very smoothly, yeah, bombshell, is what her, her wife, the cop police officer, her wife gave her that bag, bag. Hawkeye. Just take it. yeah it's like you'll get your bag, bag back you I promise you'll get your bag back and uh uh so then they go and they find out that it's the rolex hawkeye's rolex that they want to get from the compound we have no idea who compound. it belongs to and then when kate so they're they're setting up the break the break in hawkeye says he's gonna go in but then kate goes in because she's kate. stubborn that way yep. she's kate goes in then there's lights that go off and they're like what there's strobe lights going off what do you mean they don't they're confused then that's Kate's looking around. She finds the Rolex, and then she finds out that, that somebody was taking notes yeah. on Clint Barton's family. It was and most then, likely Echo's apartment because they were like silent alarms. Well, and then Hawkeye says, "Oh, it's that's a, those are a silent alarms for people, somebody that is deaf." Yeah, that's Echo's apartment, and bam, like, Maya, bam, and then Maya, yeah, yeah Maya. That that's Maya's apartment. Then bam, then bam, Maya hits her, and then. But then Kate's Clint's like, "Why didn't you tell? Why didn't you tell me she was behind you?" And you hear, <laughs> "Right, fighting." And Clint says, "I'm fighting Maya on the rooftop." And she's like, "No, I'm fighting Maya." And then he's like, "Who the who the hell am I yeah. fighting then?" Yeah. Well, eventually, all four of them are on the rooftop that Clint was on fighting, and the person that was fighting Clint is Yelena Belova, yeah. which uh, pretty intense. She's pretty. Yeah, very pretty. She's very pretty. Yeah. Uh, Most the 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 callback was when they were talking uh, in the apartment, Kate and Hawkeye. Um, she's like, "What's the what's the best top shot you ever took?" Yeah, and he's like, "The one I didn't take." The one I didn't. And I, take. Th at that point, I was like, "He's talking about Nat, right?" Because like, yep. he was sent to kill Nat and doesn't kill her because kill she Nat. wants out. Yeah, and and then that was like the same thing happened later in the episode where like Kate has the shot on her. Kate has the shot on Elena right there, and Elena's just like. Like, don't. 
don't fucking do it. Right, don't kill me. And well, then she smiled at yeah. her because she knew she wasn't going to. Yeah. And uh, there's an, also another callback while they're on the roof because there's two times where Kate almost dies. Um, she goes over a gap in the roof where she could have fallen, yeah. but there's another time where she goes over the edge and Elena hooks, Elena hooks her. Right, Elena hooked her and then sent her over the edge yeah. because she wasn't trying to kill her. Yeah. And uh, Hawkeye, basically, you can see the PTSD on his face of Nat because earlier in the episode he had a, a nightmare about that yeah. time yeah. where He's thinking she back died. That, thinking yeah. back about it, and uh, he looked over the edge, and there was Kate just hanging there, and he, you could see, like, you could see the way they shot it was to remind you about what yeah. it looked oh, like yeah. as Nat was falling. And um, she said, "Pull me up," and he cuts her loose and says, "Go, home, get yeah. out of here." And then he goes back to fighting, and then at the end of the episode, when Kate goes, who was that? He says, you don't want to know. She's like, you need to tell me. And he goes, like, somebody oh, sent gone. a Black yeah. Widow assassin. Yeah. This just got very real. Very quick. Very quick. Yeah. You are not my partner. We are not partners. That was tough for him to do, too. You could tell. Like, he didn't want to tell her that, because yeah. he likes her. She was picked up the quarter thing in yeah. a, immediately. She. He already called. He told her she's probably the best archer in the yeah. world. Yeah, like, no, he's, they've obviously obviously cares for her too. He clearly fi thinks of her as a fourth daughter yeah. already. Like he clearly, or a fourth kid, yeah. second daughter. He clearly, and he probably sees like similarities to himself and that. to Nat. Yeah. So he probably he probably already cares for her a lot. And, uh, it's tough for him to do that, but we'll have to see what happens. In see, the next episode couple. five is the biggest episode. Yeah. That's the one where I think Kingpin's showing up. That's the one where we're going to see implications like Daredevil. We're going to see implications of No Way Home. Right. Um, we're probably going to see Elena the Lobo. Oh, you're, uh, you're going to see the, the Bishop Family Bat or officially Bishop Family Party, which I believe is going to be at that same place where the giant tree is, which is the same place that Kingpin bought in season three of Daredevil, which you're going to see. I don't know. You're probably going to see. So we're um, probably going to see a Kingpin interaction with her mom. Yeah, you're going to see the mom's going to be throwing this giant party. Inside that hotel, that she asked Kate's help for. Come yeah, on, Kate's you're help. gonna have. You're gonna see this giant, giant party in this hotel. It's gonna have these big sweeping stairs, and then there's gonna be probably very like everyone's gonna freeze and stop and doing whatever, and then someone's gonna come down the stairs, and it's gonna be very quiet. It's gonna be heavy footprints, and then uh, Kingpin. It'll be Kingpin. Absolutely. So I think this is. Um, they said episode five was. The big the one, big one, yeah. So, and that's a good time to bring in Yelena. Um, the uh, there was some BS that happened with that though. So, uh, Lawrence Pugh, post Florence, Pugh. Fl sorry, Florence, Lawrence Flor Fishburn, <laughs> Florence Pugh posted pictures of herself being on Hawkeye, Hawkeye saying it was set, a great yeah. honor yeah. to be involved in this show. People started reporting the image yeah, early in the morning. She yeah, she posted it, and people started report, po reporting the image because of spoilers. Um, Instagram ended up pulling the photos, and she was blocked because uh, she was. All the reports had various reasons, but she was blocked because of posting spoilers. Uh, honestly, if you don't want to see spoilers, like what we do, we don't go on social media until yeah. we've seen it, especially if it's something big, like an like a new Disney Plus Marvel show or a movie, like. You really think I'm going to go on Twitter between Friday and Saturday? Yeah. no. Zero no. chance. Zero chance I even log on to Twitter. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even going to risk it. I will be... Uh, my Twitter will be dead Friday all day. Just not yes. happening. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, yeah. Wednesday is when they start. Yeah. Play. It was Ugh. Wednesday in the UK. Yeah. So probably yeah. going to stay off Twitter starting next week, Wednesday. Yeah. Just might even delete the app on my phone to get rid of temptation. Honestly. Just... I, I just avoid it at all costs. So, you know what you do to not see a spoiler for Hawkeye, especially if you know all the rumors have been that Yelena is going to be in it? Yeah. You don't go to Instagram and go to Florence Pugh's page or look at her story posts. Yeah. You just go until you've seen the episode. You wait. Yeah, you might have school. You might have work. You might not be able to watch it till the weekend. Well, just don't go on Instagram for three days. Yeah, and if you've seen Black Widow, if you've seen Black Widow... So the first pro first project of this phase, this phase, phase four, was it? Was it before WandaVision? I mean, WandaVision first movie. happened first, but Black Widow was supposed to be the first yeah. one and it was delayed. So, right. So you've seen that. Yep. You've seen the post credit scene. You've seen the where Val hands uh, Yelena Belova a picture of Hawkeye. 
killing Ned. as Ronan, yeah. Yeah. Well, as Ronan, yeah. So, um So <laughs> you know that probably the next the next time you're going to see Yelena Belova would be in Hawkeye involved with Hawkeye. Yeah. Yep. Something involved with Hawkeye. Whatever Hawkeye was in next was probably going to be what Yelena was in next. Yeah. Which happens to be Hawkeye. The, sh- the title show. Yeah. So that, that's on the people that got spoiled. I'm totally on Florence's side here. Just should not have worried. But should not be blocked from posting something that you're part of. It's not. Yeah. It's not a copyright issue. It was because I saw that after she got so she came out saying that she was upset and that this she yeah. said this is bullshit. Yeah. This is something. Yeah. This is something I'm proud. Yeah. Of being a part of. And I love f- being on set. All the know. responses were people saying you need to understand what a spoiler is. Go ahead and be happy about it, but wait until people have a chance to see it. And people were like doubling down on it. And. Just like, do you do you not understand? You're talking to a human being who's expressing how they feel, and you're just like, no, you're wrong. Yeah. I I can't believe it. Like, it it sounds ridiculous to, to a lot of people to say just stay off Instagram for three days. But honestly, if if you care so much about spoilers that you want to report somebody to get them blocked from posting then you care enough to be able to give up social media for a day or two. Yeah. You could have given, if, like if your reasoning is work or school, you could have waited until nighttime to go on social media. Yeah. You could, it's a, it's a 40 minute episode. It's the shortest episode yet. Yeah. It was 40 minutes flat. Or you can just wait until 12.05. No, oh, that was on Thursday. 2 a.m. is when... It was released. Yeah, I, I watched it on Wednesday at 12.05. Or Thursday at 12.05 yeah. a.m. Yeah. You could watch it at 2 a.m. if you wanted. Now, it's just... You, there were so many opportunities you did not have to report. Just... Anyway. Yeah. That was it. Yelena's in it. Super happy because she is a wonderful character. Like Joe said, she's very pretty. Yeah. And... Not only is the character, I think it'll be a wonderful match with Haley Steinfeld's Kate Bishop. It's going to be like, I think they'll have great back and forth. But there was a teaser for the next episode and Yelena is standing what looks like in that apartment holding something smiling. So I think they're going to be able to talk it out. Yeah. Either that or it's a sarcasm, sarcastic smile. um, They're going to talk it out and I think it's going to become a very good interaction between those characters. Like really, really good. So... I'm excited for next week. It's the big episode. That's what we had to say about the newest episode of Hawkeye. If you haven't seen it yet, um, and you didn't mind all these spoilers, it was an extremely slow episode in my opinion. But the, the ending was, was worth the it. The payoff yeah, was worth absolutely. it. Absolutely. And next week, I think it's going to jump right in. Yeah, it's going to get it's going to get crazy. Mm-hmm. And they said Black Widow Assassin. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, and she used the which is weird, electro like, shockers yeah, the too. widow's bite the widow's bite yeah except they're red, red and instead of bluish yeah so probably because they're an adapted version from that yeah way. they're definitely different they look like because they're like they look like sticky now yeah. so you gotta like rip it off yeah. as opposed to just being just the shock yeah. yeah so cool very cool you are yeah Lastly, we have our miscellaneous section. So uh, before we do, or after we do our miscellaneous section, we'll be done. We'll be sending you on your way. Um, One thing I recommend doing is checking out our sports section if you haven't seen that yet. If you enjoy sports, otherwise, feel free to check out our gaming channel, which is getting a total rebrand, just to you know revamp it, put it in more of the direction that we wanted it to go. And then Twitch, feel free to check out our Twitch streams. It's very fun. So I recommend checking those out from here on if you have nothing to do especially it's very entertaining um but yeah let's get into the miscellaneous the first thing we want to go over um is that the harry potter return to hogwarts you mentioned you put that in our notes you know anything about that it's the new game it's the rpg game it's not a game no oh it's the new show yeah that's the hbo on hbo max right i think it's gonna be just like the friends reunion you think so yeah absolutely i don't like friends right it's gonna be just like friends reunion where it's not gonna be an actual show or series it's gonna be all of them sitting around in an interview style talking about it because there are multiple people from like jk rowling's not gonna be there they said and there's multiple actors from the movies not gonna be there so it's it's gonna be just like the friends reunion okay 
I don't think it's gonna be that great. Yeah, I have no idea what to what it is. So it's if you're a big Harry Potter fan, I think you'll like it. Um, I know that um, it's supposed to have some fun information. I believe Daniel Radcliffe, Emma uh, Watson, and Rupert Grint are all gonna be there. So that's the yeah. big ones. Tom Felton. Tom Felton. So like those are those are the big ones that people want to hear from. So if you like uh, if you like Harry Potter. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I don't plan on watching it, not only because I don't have HBO Max, but also because um, I think it's just gonna be the interview. It's thing. just gonna be just yeah, yeah. Sure. Which you're gonna just like the Friends thing. You're gonna hear the highlights about online, and yeah. all the other stuff that isn't a highlight is probably just meh. Sure. Yeah. Uh, next thing is that was the DC news. I'm sticking with HBO Max. Colin Farrell is getting a Penguin spinoff yeah. for HBO Max. Yeah, I think they're trying to. Build a universe. Build a universe. Similar to the Disney Plus show. Yeah, but yeah. it's but um, but what's weird is that it's like Bat Batinson's universe. Yeah, which know? means that they're planning to move forward with Batinson. Like yeah, he will be not, the Batman for ten years. Yeah, but not the not Zack Snyder's universe. Right. Zack Snyder's universe is with Batfleck. Right. Bat but Black. Colin Farrell's Penguin is with Batinson. Yeah. So I'm for it. I mean, I'm for it. I mean, we're. If you look up the, I mean, like, next week we'll look up all the 2022 stuff we're getting, and it's like Morbius, Batman, No Way Home, and man, like, there's just flow yeah. of thunder. It's just you insane. Know, you're, the movie theater industry is going to see a massive boom from 2021, 2022. Yeah, for sure. So not only because people will feel more comfortable going to movies, but also because there's so much going yeah, on. Yeah, you're getting the product. So. I mean that's that's gonna be the first DC movie we've seen in like that's gonna be the first DC movie I've seen in theaters since the original Suicide Squad. Yeah, I have still never um, I have still never seen a lot of the new. I have not seen either Wonder Woman. Yeah. I have not seen the new Suicide Squad. I had not seen Birds of Prey. I didn't I didn't even see Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, Justice yeah. League. I haven't seen any of those. Yeah. So I mean, Batfleck or. Pattinson will be the first one we've seen in a while. And I so. like Robert Pattinson a lot, which is why I plan on seeing this new right. Batman. Yeah, for sure. The last thing we have to talk about... TSM! 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 Uh, TSM has a full roster. They have a... They signed on a new support and a new mid laner. Yep. And, and they, one they is from two, LPL two and one people. is from LCK. Yeah, they kept two people from last year's roster. Spika and Huni. Yep. Um, one of those I think is a great choice. Yep. Uh, they re-signed um, someone who was on their academy team and then went to Team Liquid and blew up. And that was tactical. Back. Tactical. Um, and then they got two LPL players. Which, so, the, one, the mid laner, the new mid laner, what's his name? Kaijo. Kaiju. Kaiju. Kai, Kaiduo. 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 That looks like Kaiduo. 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 Um, one of, I think it was him. One of the new players for TSM was the sub for FPX. And the other player, or the other LPL player from, was, from, was an academy player in the LPL. So one was an academy player. Yeah, he was a scouting combine. They were both from the scouting combine. But one of them was an academy player in the uh, last year, and the other one was a sub on a champion team. Yeah. So, the mid laner was the sub. I believe it was the mid laner was the sub for FPX. Okay. Um, which FPX didn't win it last year, but they won it the year before. Oh uh, yeah, the scouting combine in Korea. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, where Shen Yi was just. Both of these scouting guys combine. are probably better, better than Power of Evil. Definitely better. Than Sword Art. And they have a new coach as well. Um, and apparently the coach is... Shalvi? Shalvi? Something, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, but the new coach um, has basically said that we're going to focus on um, like precise communication and aggressive play styles. Sure. So, um, which I think that's... Um, you, the TSM's always been really good when that, that mid laner can be aggressive and make those roaming plays. I mean... You know what you have with Hooney? Either he's going to get ahead and be aggressive, or he's going to be behind and be dog shit. So, yeah. He's, um, he's a boomer bust. He's never average. Yeah. So, but when he's ahead, he can steamroll a game. Um, speak up, obviously probably our best player. And then tactical, solid. And then these two new guys. It's oh, and the new coach speaks Mandarin 
Uh, and a big reason is because both of the new players, I believe, will have to be. I think taught. one of them, they, Shenyi, I believe, is fluent in English as well. Right. One of them, I believe, one of them does not speak English well. Yeah. And he's going to have to be taught with coaching. Yeah, so. I think it's the the Kaiduo is the and the new the, coach speaks Mandarin. Right. So, um, all great news. I think the team is much better. People were making fun of them because oh, you guys don't have any NA players. Huni's considered NA now, and Spika was born here. Pretty sure, yeah, Spika is. Uh, and um, Tactical. Tactical was born in the United States, yeah. I believe. Tactical, I believe, has been here for <laughs> multiple splits. So. Uh, so, you know, whatever you want to say, plus America was built on immigrants and yeah. very negative things as well. But, you know, that's, I mean, that's what, it, in my opinion, America is supposed to be a blend of everyone, of blend of culture people pot. from all over, blending pot, uh, melting pot of yeah. culture, so. Culture pot. Um, yeah, cult I like that. Yeah, A melting pot of cultures or a culture pot. So, you know, I'm, I'm all for it, and if they win, I'm still going to be very happy for them. Uh, it's going to be hard to get through Team Liquid, but yeah. um, I'm all for it. They kind of, they said they were going to be t growing academy players. They're kind of not going through that yeah. way. Neither <laughs> of these guys have statistics. Yeah. Neither of them have played in actual sports, right. um, but they so that they are developing players in that way. But I mean, Tacticals played, uh, Spika's a vet, Hooney's a vet. They've all, those so. two have played. Those two are played in academy. Spika yeah. and so these guys all. I mean, they are developing them, but they they also grabbed vets. So seems like they're definitely planning to win. Would I rather have the new mid laner Bjergsen is not only time will tell. Yeah. Because Bjergsen even said he believes he's currently the worst player on his team. Good. Based on his mechanics, he believes he's the worst player. Sure. He's like, I still have to get back into the swing of, swing of things. I don't expect to come in and be what I used to be. Right. Well, we'll, we'll wait and see. Yeah. I can't wait for the split to start up. It's all good news, in my opinion. Yeah. And especially, it's a nice, not distraction, but it's a nice change of pace from the recent TSM stuff that was yeah. coming out. Yeah, I mean, just starting from, it's like, okay, we have Spika, and then kind of everyone's a question mark, right? Um, I mean, you know you're not going to bring the, uh, the support back. Who's the support? Sword Art. He was bad. Yeah. Wow, um, the worst player I've seen lost, since Lost was Star. not good. Power of Evil had one good game in the... Um, Power of Evil was con consistently average, and... Cooney's Boomer Bust. So. Hooney's, Hooney's Boomer Buff, Power Evil was consistently the average. Sword Art is probably the worst player I've seen since Yellow Star. And Lost <laughs> looked lost. Yeah. So. so, yeah. And we know Tactical's great. Tactical played for TL. He was good. Uh, so, yeah. All good things. All good things. Uh, last thing is if you uh, like this, if you stuck around this long, uh, feel free to subscribe. It really helps our channel out a lot. Drop a like, comment. Um, Especially if you have some things to say about the Marvel Universe, we would love to interact and talk back and forth about what you might have to say. Uh, if you're a League of Legends fan, feel free to talk about TSM, that sort of thing with us. Um, if but like yeah. TFT. Or TFT. Yeah, if like League of Legends and TFT, if you like Arcane. Yeah. We know you like Arcane, because everyone likes Arcane. Yeah, and that was one of our most watched videos, is stuff that has Arcane in it. So. Yeah, Victor. Uh, <laughs> feel free, you know, we would love to interact and talk, so feel free to drop a comment, anything like that. And uh, we really want to help this channel grow, so definitely stick around because we will be continuously posting new, fresh content and uh, know you're going to love it. Outside of all of this wonderful information, you all look beautiful today, so go out there, make a difference, and GG. GG. GG.